you presenters today, myself, Jennifer Reeves, I'm the Outage Management Product Manager, and uh, John Sell, who is our distribution, um, Advanced Distribution Management Product Manager. So we uh, want to talk to you about the topic. Um, hopefully it's something that you've uh, experienced. If you want to share your experiences as we go through, feel free to let us know. So the, the customer challenge that we see here is, is really how do we um, improve that outage response and restoration process uh, when there's a, a challenge like a, a severe weather event, a storm that's taken out some of your, your assets, caused damage out there that you have to understand what's going on out in the field and uh, how, how do you make that um, process take advantage of information that's available and brought in from, from different sources. As we know, the, the utilities um, get impacted by these storms uh, you know, during their storm seasons. Uh, the impact of, uh, of the last storm season between 2016 and 2017 alone uh, has caused uh, cost U.S. utilities upwards of $10, million, $10 billion in uh, repairs and fines. And there's an estimate that on an annual basis, the cost of, of power outages to the U.S. economy is uh, between 20 and $30 billion a year. So that's very significant cost. And whatever a utility can do to reduce the time it takes to restore and repair um, damaged equipment and get power back on um, can improve those or reduce those costs to the utility. So I want to talk about a topic or a concept that we call situational intelligence. And um, it's, it's a new term that defines, you know, kind of an augmented level of situational awareness where you're, you're getting beyond um, just knowing what's going on, but taking that information from various sources coming into the control center from uh, different types of users out in the field, reporting damage, reporting um, the status of your AMI equipment, and SCADA messages coming in and helping you uh, create a more informed and uh, you know, situational awareness and sharing that data, making decisions based on that data in a different way than we can do today. So it really comes from a combination of the people and the having the right processes in place and the tools to support those people in that workflow and making it as streamlined as possible. So how do we do, how do we foster situational intelligence uh, in the distribution operations center? Really it's creating a visual uh, awareness of what's going on and, and knowing where the outage management system may predict where an outage is, but knowing where other things relevant to that outage and getting the power back on that come into play, knowing more about that as well and correlating that information into, um, into decision and actionable intelligence that you can, uh, you can make decisions on and, and dispatch crews based on that information. And really making the whole process more streamlined helps during a storm when tensions are running high, people are under a lot of stress in the control room, and anything that we can do to make that process more streamlined, um, more fluid, can help reduce the operator's uh, stress in that environment. So we're going to talk a little bit about, about that experience of the user in the context of, of having a, a situational intelligence that helps them do their jobs better. So the benefits here are pretty uh, obvious. Uh, improving the productivity, having uh, better decisions, getting the right information to the, to the right people uh, during the height of a storm and making better decisions based on that information. Being able to improve the communications to our customers out there, like knowing, having enough information to give an informed uh, estimated time of restoration is really important during these storms because our, our utility customers are expecting to know when the power is going to come on and they want you to tell them um, and with some level of confidence when that's going to be. And when it happens, they're very happy, but if we don't meet those ETRs, then uh, they, don't, they don't get as... Uh, they don't have as much confidence in our ability to, to really understand what's going on during an outage. So, um, and then also just an overall reduction in cost based on being able to restore power more quickly, uh, make decisions that get the right crews out there as quickly as possible, 
reducing sending people uh, that don't need to be on a certain location uh, when they, uh, they don't have the right skills or the right uh, equipment to, to make a repair. So that's what we're, we're looking to improve as we create this situational intelligence. So it, um, most utilities already have damage assessment processes in place, and they already have outage management in place. But what we've, we've noticed over the years is that those systems and processes are very siloed and separate from each other. And when you have damage being assessed in one part of the business and coming into one department, and outages being managed by a different group of people, and those two departments aren't sharing the information, you, you aren't getting the benefit of having that information coming into the, you aren't getting the full benefit of having that information coming in from the field and being able to correlate it and make decisions based on it, on the complement of those two pieces of information. So how do we fix that? The um, integrated outage response solution helps the, uh, the outage management system have awareness and integration into the damage assessment process and vice versa. So you can have, uh, within the damage assessment, you can see where the outages are, where we, we've predicted the outages, the different customers that have called in, and you can go out and do assessments with that knowledge, with that information. And when the assessment comes back, you can see within the, within the OMS where all the damage is and be able to assess what kind of crews, um, how many crews, and dispatch those crews accordingly. So that, that integrated end-to-end -end process is a solution that we, we offer today. And it, it's brought together different um, technology, pieces of technology within our solution offering. We have our outage management system, the um, you know, storm damage assessment process and product, and those are brought together through this integrated solution. So we've, um, as I mentioned, a lot of um, companies have these two processes in place today, but um, we, we did a little poll at a recent industry conference, and um, these are the polling results. I just want to go over those quickly with you, but only about 50% of utilities at that conference had uh, digital tools in place for capturing damage. So a lot of companies are still, when the storm hits, reverting to paper maps, going out with the in the trucks and getting noted, you know, different damage uh, assessments being noted on the paper maps and or some kind of paper process. So that was pretty, um, pretty telling, it was only about 50% of the way there. The other, the other uh, poll that we did was, well, if you are doing digital assessment, what kind of, uh, what kind of a digital tool are you using? So we had um, still a, a significant number said that there's still pen and paper as the main tool. So we collect the damage, and then digitize it maybe as a secondary step within the process. So there could be a lot of lag time between the recognition that there's damage and that damage getting back to the, to the central office and getting, getting um, used to make decisions within the context of outage management. And then a, ver a variety of other tools in use, so combinations of iOS, tablets, or Android devices, etc. And... The, um, the third question we asked was, well, what is the level of integration? So if you have digital damage assessment, you have outage management, how much of, the, um, of your systems are integrated between the OMS and the damage assessment process? And so, again, only about 33% uh, are still using manual. 50% of those that are electronic are not integrated. So a small portion, 17%, um, are integrated to the outage management system. So there's still a ways to go. You know, as far as getting these two processes to talk to one another, um, but it is you know one of one use case an example where when we when we get there the the situational intelligence the level of information flowing from the field into the control center and vice versa uh, will help create that situational intelligence and then help the operations uh, run more smoothly and restore power more quickly. So and one one other topic that we're going to have John come up and talk about here is our, the importance of user experience in all of this. So. Thank you, Jennifer. I see some people out here, of course, who are familiar with our product as it exists today. Some people that may not be, but 
regardless of what you're experienced with, UI UX is an important part of this whole equation because, you know, on a good day, a blue sky day, if you've ever been inside a distribution control center, you know it's very busy. You get involved with a major storm and it just goes beyond that. And I guess UI is a very important part of keeping stress levels down and being able to manage it. And I'm using an um, analogy here to try to describe UI versus something called UX, user experience. They're not the same, though most people don't understand the business or the difference. I certainly didn't before we started investing in this. But if you think of UI, it's like think of a bicycle. Your control levers, you sit on the seat, you've got the pedals and the brakes, and that's how you control the bicycle. What you do with it and how it performs is an entirely different issue. And this would be described as probably a good user experience. But it goes deeper than that. It gets into workflows. It gets into processes. Can you do things in one click instead of five clicks? And what impact does that have on your operations, your ability to deal with stress in a storm situation and so forth? Uh, this is the worst example of that. You know, this is a bad day at the office. I've never really seen this in a control center, but you know, maybe somebody went to sleep after 24 hours of storm duty, but I mean, it can happen. You've got to keep stress down to be uh, efficient in your decision making, to make good decisions, and to keep all the balls in the air that you need to to get restoration happening appropriately. So um, UI UX is taking lots of data, integrating it properly, making it available to the user in a way that's friendly, that makes it usable, makes it economical, and doesn't increase the workload on the user. It should be a tool that helps them, not another issue they have to deal with in the, in the heat of the battle. And I, I like this line here, don't make them think. It should be obvious what you do next. You should know where to click to get to where you want to go, and you should be able to get there quickly and efficiently. So UX design is critical. And uh, you know, speaking for GE right now, we're on the trail to build a new UI UX that we'll use across all our portfolio across the entire world. And you'll start to see some of that later this year in a thin client OMS dispatcher will, because I don't think we've shared this with you yet, but we will later and you'll see some of this. So improve decision-making via, via data visualization. And this is getting the right information to the user at the right time. And it might ju not just be data in a storm sense that's mastered by an OMS. There might be data you need from the storm. You know, where's the storm front? What's the temperature doing? Uh, what other systems have information that could help me make decisions right now? It's nice to be able to pull all that together. We've integrated that with a product called Grid IQ Insight. Some of you have seen that here. Um, it's a very important product for real-time data visualization. It's not really reporting, it's not really analytics, it's situational awareness at this time. It's a real-time thing. So there's a lot you can do in the control room and with UI UX to improve things for the, the user. This is an example of a dashboard. That's an OMS-only dashboard. And you can see most of the data here came from the OMS. Some of it came from a crew management system. Some of it came from a damage management system. And of course, a lot of it came from, in this case, Google Maps, from a weather system. Um, the sky's the limit to the data source that you can take and integrate into this type of dashboard environment to provide better situational awareness to the user. So the reason we're talking about this is the storm of the century now is happening every other month, I think. Um, depending on the part of the political spectrum you're on, you either believe it's gonna get worse or it's just a blip and it'll go away soon if it's only a statistical problem. But realistically, we've had a lot of large storms. We have every reason to believe there's going to be more. We're going to have to manage. We're going to have to operate differently. We're going to have to have new paradigms of what we do internally, what we do with mutual assistance crews, what we do for preparation, what we do for uh, strengthening the system so it's not impacted as much. Everything's on the table now. We have to deal with all of that. So we really talked about what we do during the storm. We talk about OMS and situational awareness. But there's stuff we can do prior to the storm and after the storm that's important as well. And that includes running realistic emergency preparation drills. If you're familiar with GE, you know we have a very robust system simulator that enables you to play storms in your systems as though they're real. An operator wouldn't know the difference if you didn't tell them. And you can use that as the basis, as a tabletop exercise for all of, other, all of the rest of your emergency preparedness, like who do I have to mobilize? Who's going out in the field to uh, run, uh, manage the uh, mutual assistance crews and so forth? You can manage material, understand how you're going to move it around, and so forth. And then after the storm, there's a lot you can do, too, because as you know, DMS, OMS, SCADA systems, crew management systems, we generate a boatload of data for you. 
and it's, it's a shame to let that uh, lay around or just generate reports from it. You can actually mine that data, and after the fact, you can look at what you could have done better uh, for the next storm so that you're better optimized and better prepared. So kind of in the middle is the real-time stuff where we're doing operations optimization. We want to make you as efficient as you can. Um, then there's, you know, before the storm and after the storm, all that data that's made available, you can now use to provide some deep analytics and eventually machine learning and other techniques to take advantage of that data so that you can have the absolute fastest response time to a storm, get your customers back online as quickly as possible, and then be optimized for the next storm. Make sure your investments are flowing to the right place. If you'd like to read more about this, we actually developed a white paper, and you can see it online, you can search for it, or here's a shortcut, tiny bit, what do we call it, itty bitty? There's a URL if you'd like to see this uh, white paper, you can download it and read it. Um, you can also reach Jennifer and I on Twitter, those are our Twitter feeds, and of course you can contact us directly at GE with our first name dot last name at GE.com if you're interested in learning more.